illustrious senator from Arizona, John McCain, uh, took Democrat Chris Murphy over to uh, meet with the leaders of the uh, Svoboda Party, the Freedom Party. Hold on. You know what you're talking about. I'm going to come back to you. Stay there. Second hour coming up. Don't hang up. He's done his research. Yeah. And again, I'm not romanticizing the Russians or, or, or the Eastern Ukraine. The point is the West is starting this. Morally, that's wrong. And George Soros is quarterback in the whole thing. What does that tell you about it? George Soros is a piece of crap. And Thank by the way, he is a Nazi as well. I just can never get rid of these people. Visit GCN. Right, stay with us. today. Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. We're now into hour number two, and we're video free today because of a major power outage in the area. We're on backup generators, audio only, but hey, that takes us back to our roots. There's a study out showing that you can think better in a darker room. And I tell you, it's assaulting to have TV lights pointed at you all the time. I like being in here with just one light on. It's very restful, to, like I used to do the radio show back in the past without the simulcast of TV. Uh, but we're taking your phone calls right now. Coming up in the next segment, I'm going to delve into the merger of three humans into one. You thought clones were bad news, folks. Uh, wait until we break all this down. FDA weighs risk of three-person embryo fertilization. Recap and start over, Richard, Mississippi. You were bringing up the Ukraine situation. Look, both sides have issues with each other, and I'm sure the government was corrupt. Most governments are corrupt, but it was elected. The point is they already overthrew the government in 2004, then that got reversed. George Soros, the State Department, Hillary Clinton, John McCain, they started this whole thing during the Olympics so that the Russians wouldn't want to respond during the first takeover. The Russians are on record now saying they're sending troops into Crimea nearby. Uh, this is a serious situation. Uh, go ahead and make your points you were starting to get into there, Richard. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I, as far as Crimea goes, that's the Russians' only option is to annex Crimea and to save uh, the ethnic Russians who live in that region from probably what we would see, uh, what we had in Bosnia. Uh, ethnic cleansing, They've uh, the new... Uh, the coup d'etat that took place, the new uh, government, quote-unquote, has already voted to outlaw the Russian language uh, today in uh, western Ukraine, and they uh, have no uh, remorse for anyone who sided with the former uh, Soviet Union. Uh, the far-right-wing parties as a collective that came together with George Soros and the EU and the United States uh, started out as the organization of Ukrainian nationalists who formed after World War II to collaborate with the Nazis uh, to slaughter uh, 60,000 Poles. And those folks uh, have no love for uh, Jewish people. They have no love for anyone who even has a hint. And, of, it, and, uh, and it shows how George Soros will literally work with anybody. Well, absolutely. Um, it, it defies logic uh, that when Look at how they're have, funding Al Qaeda to attack Syria and Egypt. I mean, it's just—it's despicable. And and that gets to my question that I, that I'm trying to get to with this background for you is in USA Today yesterday they ran a photo of a protester, quote unquote, wearing a World War II SS helmet, and uh, the the gist of the protest is not any type of independence for Ukraine, but to return fascist ideals to a region which they thought had had them taken from Which them. is even more ridiculous because the EU is going to open the borders up to uh, immigration from all over the world. It's just, look, those right-wing people are idiots. I wouldn't even call them right-wing because they were connected to the Nazis. I'd call them fascist slash socialist. And because that's fascism and socialism are almost the same thing. Russians will annex Crimea in order to preserve, you know, obviously their heritage and the, the, the largest uh, naval base that they, they have? Uh, yeah, I think that's going to happen. In fact, it's being reported up on Infowars.com uh, out of uh, Zero Hedge, Joel Skousen. By the way, let's get Joel Skousen on about what's happening. I want to talk to him this week. 
about Ukraine. It's on. Putin deploys troop battalion. Russians raise flag over Ukraine Republic of Crimea. And I'll cover some of that coming up after I get into this uh, cloning news. That's really what it is. Straight ahead. Good to hear from you, caller. Uh, thank you, Richard. Kevin, Matt, Kyle, Simon, 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Your phone calls are coming up straight ahead. I'm doing a good job today of taking phone calls. I get a gold star and a lollipop later. And something even more delicious. The Genesis Communications Radio Network proudly presents The Alex Jones Show because there's a war on for your mind. I want to be clear here. I am not anti-technology. Technology generally is neutral. But historically, it has a lot of bad side effects as well. And examples of that are obviously legion. But I remember being on the radio 18, 19 years ago and reading BBC News articles about how they'd already cloned humans in laboratories. They had just killed the embryos before they developed to any major size. And then I saw a mention in the Washington Post and other publications about how in places like Costa Rica, they had created laboratories, and the word is brought human clones to term. Uh, the word is, is that in the 1940s, some of the Nazis were able to clone rabbits. Now, of course, in the last 20 years, they've cloned sheep, they've cloned rabbits, uh, the list goes on and on. The issue here is that well, there's many issues, but the larger issue is the globalist are social engineers. And they hypothesized DNA in the 1850s under Galton, the father of eugenics, who also invented the, uh, the strictures and the science of biometrics. And it has been eugenics in the last 160 years or so that is the governing undergirder of philosophy of social engineering and societal architecture. And my greatest goal is to simply get listeners to realize there is social engineering, there is social architecture going on, and the people that are implementing it and the people that are carrying it out are extremely intelligent, extremely neurotic, and extremely anti-general public and are on big power trips and believe that they are going to be able to seize the future by walling off society in an arrested, shut down, stagnated technological system, while in government and corporate and university reservations, they will be able to build the next uh, level civilization with the life extension technologies, the um, interstellar travel, uh, and all the things of that we think of uh, as the future. And so that decision has been made to give us Justin Bieber and all the rest of the mindless hype in the NFL. And while we're busy obsessing over those little factoids that don't affect the establishment, they are building the new world around us. And the fact that the public is so dumbed down and so distracted and so already raised in front of a television set from birth, the establishment literally has written thousands and thousands of white papers and books admitting all this. Uh, Google's head of technology came out two days ago and said, rise of the robots into the humans 2030. And that will be like a bug that they just step on. Now, I mean, he was saying that 20 years ago. The issue is, is that he's actually racially running Google. And it's not about the trillions of dollars now, folks. It's about these guys never dying. But see, before they can develop those technologies, they have to create a world government and restrict our access to health care and bring in the death panels so that you don't get access to it. And you've got to also understand they're not going to let you know about the real medicine and, and technological systems they've created. That is going to be closely held under national security and is closely held under national and global corporate security. I mean, look at Dick Cheney. He survived with a heart pump for two years. Nobody else could survive a year. He looks great now, got a heart transplant. And if you don't know that he got advanced technologies to be able to do that, 
he runs around giving speeches claiming he didn't, you're a fool. And so this is the ultimate discrimination we're talking about, not letting the general population have access to all of this, not even letting us know that there have been space planes in orbit for 30 years, not letting folks know there have been giant uh, DU meteor gun platforms in space for 30 years, not letting the public know that they've been cloning humans since the 1950s, not letting the public know they had underground base facilities building cyborgs in the 1980s. Um, they tried to hire my dad and like 10 other top dentists in Dallas uh, to, you know, to, to be paid a half million dollars a year when I was like 12 years old. Uh, he sat around the dinner table saying, well, this is classified, but honey, blah, blah, blah. You know, they, they won't tell me what it is, but it's cybernetics. And it's probably, you know, putting, um, you know, hidden electronics and things in special forces is basically what he'd been told. And I'm not trying to impress you folks. They tried to hire a whole bunch of oral surgeons that were pioneers in implants like my dad was. I mean, what do you think they're putting in spies' jaws, spies' skulls? Uh, he was told, I mean, literally he was going to be in Maryland in underground facilities creating cyborgs. You're not in Kansas anymore, ladies and gentlemen. I want to just get all this across to all of you so that you understand that. And so that you realize that it, all of these technologies we are tested upon with all the new genetic therapies and the new uh, endocrine therapies and the new DNA therapies we and the viral therapies we are tested on. That's why they call the medical system in the West a practice because you're never perfecting what you're doing. You are practicing on the patient's. Just 150 years ago in England, the general public did not have access to doctors, period, unless you were in a medical facility and had been signed over for medical experimentation. You were then practiced upon so that the elite doctors could then go and actually carry out the medicine on the elite. So this isn't something new that we're practiced on. We've always been practiced on. We've always been seen as animals, whether it was Japan or ancient France or ancient Russia. We are animals. The elite are gods. Every culture has an upper class that says everyone else is an animal under them as the excuse to keep people like animals so you can control them. Because humans, homo sapien, sapien, predator. What, what, what's the word in Latin for predator? Because that's what I would really call the elite. Homo sapiens sapien tyrannus. Homo sapiens sapien tyrant. Homo sapiens sapien vampiris. Homo sapiens sapien parasitus. These are the names of the elite. And my biggest problem with them is, sure, there's dumbed down, lazy, evil, unwashed masses. They're always out there. And... I understand the elite have got, I mean, I've seen them, I've been around them. I mean, they are really smart people. Their eyes twinkle with, with demonic intelligence. My only issue is the crime of trying to dumb everybody down so you can manage people shows that you're not really as elite as you say you are. You believe your social Darwinism gives you this authorization to dominate and kill and rule over everyone. And, and the mere fact that you're in charge means that you have a right to rule over everyone. But the very sciences of control that you're bringing forward are blowing back on your children. I've run into some of the most elite families in the world growing up. Some of my crew have grown up around some of the most elite families, some of the biggest names out there. And they literally are totally unhappy, screwed up people. The path you're going down is not a good one. Now, I've prefaced all of this with, with just some basic background. It's such a big area, it's hard to get into. But... I saw this article yesterday, and I mentioned it. And there's a new one out today on Bloomberg. The stories are up on Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com right now. Here it is out of Bloomberg. Dad may join two moms for disease-free designer babies. You're that disease-free. Talk about selling it. Disease-free. You're going to be disease-free now. Just let us get in there and change the embryo and put other people's DNA in which they can now basically nanotech and, and create artificially and put whatever Trojan horses, whatever programs they want into there, just like all the Monsanto crops and the rest of it, they'll have eight stack traits 
And then they go in and look at them and they find other traits and people sue them. And they declare national security and proprietary.